there. All right, man, I'm hitting the magical button just to, just to make sure that we kind of go live, Robert. I always mention to people the time that I was interviewing Dr. George Frazier and I forgot to hit the, um, the button to record. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what do you do when you actually make a mistake? You know, what do you do when that takes place? Um, I'm going to do a check in a moment. Uh, it should be coming up in a second. Let's just make sure. I always have to go over and make sure I can see it. Um, as we get started, I'm looking forward to today's conversation or this morning, or this afternoon when people are showing up. You know that? Yes, sir. Likewise. I'm looking forward to not only chatting with you, but also hopefully being able to provide some value to the people that are listening as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, mic check, mic check. Can you even hear me? I can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay. You can hear me. I can hear you. That's a, that's a good first start, by the way, brother. That's a good first start. We can hear each other. That's good. Now, let's make sure always- other... Folks that are joining can hear us. <laughs> All right, let me. I'm gonna go over to my page now. I'm just gonna see if we're even broadcasting. Cause wouldn't wouldn't that be crazy if we was we was going live and nobody could hear us? By the way, wouldn't that just be the craziest thing in the world? That, that's that's the last thing you want right now. But uh, yeah, that those first those first starts, those first steps are important, right? Yeah, uh, Dorcia is on here. So Dorcia, hey Dorcia, let us know if you can hear us, Dorcia. Uh, Letitia Nicole has joined. Letitia, let us know if you can hear us. Tanisha, boy, what's up? It's always a pleasure. What's going on? We're in the house. Let me know you can hear me. Um, let us know that you're there, by the way. We certainly appreciate that. By What's up, Sherry Crocky Burden? Thanks for joining. Now, mic check, mic check. Let me do a mic check. Robert, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Can you hear me? Uh, I think I can hear you. What's up, Dr. Kinnett? Let us know you can hear us, Dr. Kinnett. Joe Johnson, my man, what's going on? Got to have you on, man. I got to reach out to you, man. Send me an inbox message. Got to get you on the show. Um, Let me see. Uh, Nestle, Nestle, thank you for your comments. We appreciate you showing up. Um, Robert, okay, Robert, Robert, you can hear me. All right, let me see. Dorsey says loud and clear. That's good. That's good. And can you guys hear um, Robert? If you can hear Robert, Robert, say mic check, mic check. Mike, check, Mike, check. Can you hear me out there? Now, if you can hear Robert Shirley, if you can hear Robert Nestle, if you can hear Robert Dorsey, if you can hear Robert, Dr. Kinnett, let's say, Robert, we can hear you, by the way. Because <laughs> we want to make sure we can be heard. I don't want to be out here and not be heard. Okay, Dan Thomas is joining. Dr. Kinnett said we can hear you. That means we can officially Perfect. kick off. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started. We've got a lineup today. We've got a show. We're going to get going in five. Y'all get ready. Three, get ready. Two, get ready. One, here we go. Please go ahead and give a big standing check ovation check, 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 for check. the one and the only Shay Brown. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up and it knows it must outrun the fastest lion or be killed and eaten. Also, every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up and knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. You've heard it before. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be what? You better be running. That's right. That's right. You better be running. Life is about meaning. And meaning is about service. Isn't that the reason why we're all here? Isn't that what we're all searching for? 2013, the Peak Performance Institute was created. 5,000 clients who we've helped turn their idea into a reality, their reality into a business, their business into a movement, impacting 5.7 million lives around the world. Imagine that. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Network, the world's largest organization for the well-being of an entrepreneur. And as we always say, Our mission at the Happy Entrepreneur Network, our mission is to inspire, empower, and provide resources for the entrepreneur to live a balanced life and execute their vision for the people they were called to serve. And our mantra, you know, I love our belief. Everyone should have a belief statement. Our belief is the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. With that being said, let's get started. 
Well, it's a great day. Let's get started. I'm so excited. What's going on, C.F. Jackson? Coming to us from Atlanta. Look, I can't wait. We're going to be in Atlanta next week. We've got to connect. We're going to be at MemberCon Live. It's going down with none other than the one and the only Justin Burns. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait to connect with you. What's up, Kia Stringfield? Thanks for joining. And my guest, none other than the, not A, but the Robert Kohler, who I just had a chance to hang out with just this past weekend over at Sponsorship Live. What's going on, Robert? Brother Che Brown, thank you for having me, man. It was a pleasure being able to connect with you this weekend. Had an awesome time at the event and uh, really, really appreciated, you know, getting to spend some time with you and making sure that we got a chance to connect tonight. Well, you know, it is an honor. It is a privilege, man. I'm so excited. What's up, Tanisha Green? What's up, Nathan? What's up, Nova? What's up, Kim? Everybody who's joining in, we love you. We appreciate you. Look, Robert, when I get started, I know we're going to talk about what it means to be a top performer. I know we're going to talk about, you know, what it means to be at a network and everything you're doing over at Entrepreneur Dinners. But what I like to do right now for all of my happy entrepreneurs, for all of my superstars, for all of my champions. What's up, Nova? I love what you're doing out there, Nova. Love following you, by the way. You're super incredible. Tanisha, thanks for contributing the thought of the day, by the way. But I like to get started, if I can, Rob, I like to get started with the Champions Creed, right? I, I just, I love the Champions Creed. Um, I love what it means because for me in my business, um, my mentor gave it to me 15 plus years ago. And it stuck by me, Nova. It stuck by me, Kim. It stuck by me, CF Jackson. And I want to share with you. And Robert, I like I like for you to take a look at it. Hopefully you can see it. Let me do a check. Can you see that, Robert? Can you see it there? It says I can see it. Good. It says Champions Creed. Now I'm going to read it, Robert. The Champions Creed says, I'm not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. Do me a favor if you can, do me a favor. Go ahead and read the Champions Creed one time. My mentor gave it to me and I pass it on to you. Take it away, Robert. Can you read that one time for us? Yes, sir. I am not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying. Keep and trying, keep trying, keep and trying. Keep trying and keep trying. Do me a favor if you can, as you step back and you see it out there if you can, what does it mean to keep trying? What does it mean to keep going? What does it mean to you to never ever give up? For everyone who's joining on right now, for everyone who's joining on, what's up John? Hey, I just connected with John. What's up Layla? Layla, I love what you're doing, Layla Ware, with all of the speakers. Your concierge service is amazing, one of a kind. I wish I could have connected with you when I was in Houston. Samuel, thanks for joining. Alyssa, it's always a pleasure. Albert, thanks for all your comments. Do me a favor. We're doing the Champions Creed. You know I love the Champions Creed. I just love the Champions Creed. Do me a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video, and let's encourage another entrepreneur. Let's encourage, well, another small business owner. Let's encourage an author or a speaker or a coach or someone out there today that just has to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Look right below the video. Look right below the video. Don't talk about yourself, Nova. Don't talk about yourself, Alyssa. Hello, Alyssa. How you doing? What's up, Kim? Talk to another entrepreneur. You look right below the video and write these words. You are a champion. Hashtag keep trying. I want you to look right below the video. Look right below the video. Don't do it for Shea Brown. Don't do it for Robert. Do it for another entrepreneur. Look right below the video and put, you are a champion. Hashtag keep trying. Put, you are a champion. Hashtag keep trying. We got a lineup tonight, but I want you to encourage someone else. You look right below the video, look right below the video, and I want you to put, you are a champion. Hashtag keep trying. And keep trying. And keep trying. Robert, when you hear those words, you are a champion, hashtag keep trying, what does that mean to you? How does that resonate for you? Talk to me. What's going through your mind as you're doing that, by the way? Stephanie Hagen says, what's going on? Tanisha Green says, you are a champion, hashtag keep going. Dorsey, Dorsey's in the house. <laughs> Dorsey says, you are a champion, hashtag keep trying. Nova says, you are a champion, hashtag keep trying. Melissa Johnson, what's up? What's up? What's up? She says, you are a champion. Hashtag keep trying. Can you see those comments right below, Robert? Can you see those popping up? Douglas, Douglas, I can't wait to hear where you park your money. Y'all 
Y'all got to hear that. You got to hear that. Elena, I see you. Samuel says you are a champion. Nathan says you are a champion. Take it away, Robbie. Take it away. Hashtag you are a champion. Keep on trying. What does that mean when you hear those words? Well, I'll tell you what that means to me is that every single one of us have a seed of greatness and purpose inside of us. And regardless of where we're at right now, you are a champion. Your purpose has already been destined for greatness. And the fact is, look, Jay, as you know, and, it, and many of the people that are watching us right now know, we have to go through challenges, we have to overcome hurdles, and we have to break through obstacles in order for us to see success on the other side. And all that means is that in order for us to do the things that are destined for us, in order for us to, to become those champions that we're you know, designed to be, we have to go through some, some of the, the challenges, some of the um, the difficulties that pass with us. You know, I heard a stat this week in Shay when we were together. Somebody said that the average millionaire uh, goes through 17 different business ideas and is broke or bankrupt three times in their life. What? No way. That's what I heard this weekend too. And you know what that meant to me? It said that we're naturally going to go through failures. And those failures are just part of the stepping stone in order for us to get to success. And when I hear your Champions Creed, it really resonates with me because I know from my own experience and also from the experience of my peers, the people who have come before us, right, because we stand on the shoulders of giants, that they also had to go through failures in order for them to become champions as well. Wow. You know, Robert, that when I hear that, that, that is so amazing. That is so incredible. I don't know if you see the comments below, but Kia Stringler says you are a champion. Felicia Jones is watching right now. Eric Heilig, what's up, Eric? Eric's out there with Marriage Can Win, by the way. He's out there in Florida. He's joining. Albert says you are a champion. Annette, it's a pleasure. Melissa Johnson Elvis says, what's up? I see you out there. Coco, I'm th I'm, thanks for joining, by the way. She's out there. Nicole Brown is out there. I see you, Felicia. I see you, Annette. Letitia Nicole, a seed of greatness is inside you. You know, that means so much. Tanisha, that means so much. You know, I'm going to get into today about what it really means to be one of the top characteristics. Sakoni Prince does the thought of the week. Sakoni Prince, thanks for all you're doing. Doc Lavaluka Moore, I see you. Thank you so much. What I'd like to do, if I can, because we're going to jump right into it. We, we've got... A, a, just a lineup going on today. But but I want to go on over there. As you said, seeds of greatness. Uh, Dr. Letitia Nicole is out there listening. Let's, let's hear what she has to say. Which it should pop up. Dr. Letitia. Hello, everyone. It's your girl, Letitia Nicole Beatty, CEO, founder of Speak Life Enterprise. And I am here today to share my thought of the week. But first and foremost, I want to say hello to all of the happy entrepreneurs out there and also to thank Shay Brown, the visionary of this amazing group. Hey, thank you, Shay, for allowing me to speak life. So to get on with my thought of the week. Now, you guys listen really carefully. My thought of the week is to shine your light. I'm going to say it again. Shine your light. You are paving a way for other entrepreneurs to get to their destination. You are showing them how to get there authentically. You're showing up in your purpose and your passion. And I'm telling you, you are paving a way. Continue to shine your light even brighter. Shine your light and show up so other entrepreneurs can get to their destination. You guys, my name is Letitia Nicole, and I speak life so that we all may have life more abundantly. But until next time, continue to shine your light. Blessings. Blessings to none other than the one and the only Dr. Letitia Nicole, who's out there right now. She said, shine your light. Don't worry. We're going to talk about top producers. Don't worry. We're going to talk about entrepreneur dinner. Don't worry. We're going to talk about the secret and networking that you want to know about. But first, I want to recognize none other than Nina. What's up, Nina? Abdul is watching right now. She does some amazing things with social media success networks. Thanks for joining. Deborah. What's up, Deborah? Deborah's in the house. Thanks so much. Coco, it is always a pleasure. What's up, Angel? What's up? What's up? And Sakoni Prince. Sakoni Prince, shine your light. Someone do me a favor. Someone do me a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video and just write these words. Hashtag shine your light. 
hashtag shine your light. No matter what you're going through right now, maybe right now there's a health challenge that's on you or on your family. You can still hashtag shine your light. Maybe right now there's a financial setback that's happening for you. You can still hashtag shine your light. Maybe, maybe right now as we're talking, maybe right now as we're talking, um, I'm in your business. You're like, Shay, it's not going the way I want it to go. Shay, I, I'm challenged. Shay, you don't get it. Shay, if you had my hand, you struggle. No, no, no. Someone is praying right now. They had your hand. You can still shine your light no matter what. That's possible. So you look right below the video. You look right below the video like Sakoni Prince and put shine your light. You look right below the video like Douglas and put hashtag shine your light. Nova is right and shine your light. You know, the reason why, Robert, I mentioned to shine your light. Have you ever found yourself where you were struggling, Robert, and there was a setback and there was a challenge? Um, do you mind sharing maybe a time where that's taking place in your life and you had to turn things around and you had to hashtag shine your light? Can you see Coco? She said hashtag shine your light. Letitia said hashtag shine your light. What's going on other than Annette said hashtag shine your light. Robert, talk about hashtag shine your light. And I'm a, I want to get into it. I want to share some secrets, by the way, what it takes to be a top performer, um, what it takes to be a peak performer. But what does it take to hashtag shine your light, my man? Well, I love what Letitia said there. I mean, she said you have to shine your light in order to help others to get to their destination. You notice when she said shine your light, it wasn't about yourself and what you're doing but rather how what you are capable of impacts others as well and how it helps them to get to their destination. And I don't know if we want to get too serious too early. Yes, but I'm go, gonna share go. With you. Let's get All serious. Right. Cool. Well, I'm going to share with you a story um, that made me think about shining your light. So um, a few years ago, I was just getting started in entrepreneurship. And um, I was trying it out. I was trying these different uh, businesses, and I wasn't really sure what was going to take me to the next level. And I actually had um, – it's, it's kind of a funny story. Um, I had a mentor that was talking to me and, and asking me you know, what it, what it required for me to take to the next step. And um, he asked me how much money I had in my bank account. And I told him, well, I think I have uh, 160 bucks in my bank account. You know, uh, just prior to that, I had I had quit my job um, a few about a year or so earlier. Um, I decided to go full time on entrepreneurship, and I was really giving it a go. And like we talked about earlier, you have to go uh, through obstacles, you have to overcome failures in order to find your greatness, that seed that's within you. And I was going through that process, um, and I thought I had 150 bucks. What I found out is that I had 120 dollars in one bank account, and I had a negative 120 bucks in another account. So effectively, I had zero dollars in my bank account. That's fine. Right? And I had no idea where my money was going to come. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do next. And I didn't know how I was going to find my way out of that situation. Right, But what I needed to do was find a light. And so what I did that same day is I looked into the areas that I served others the best and I made certain that I was going to provide an opportunity for others to get out of the situation that they were in. And so uh, I called a few friends. I called a few people that had previously worked with before. And I invited them the opportunity for me to help them in the areas that I served at my greatness, my seat of greatness that I always had. And I invited to help them out. And that same day where I went from uh, effectively zero bucks in a bank account, I ended up earning, uh, generating $18,000 in revenue and collecting $6,000 in profit that very same day. And the, this, this story is not about that the money figure. The story is about um, it took me being in a dark place and finding the light for me to search my way out. And that light was, what was what's the best way that I can serve others? And when I answered that question, I allowed myself to step out and to be that light for myself, but also to be the light for someone else, I was able to recover and be in a much better situation. And since then, um, things have gotten better. So I love, again, what Letitia said about shining your light because it's through shining your light um, that enables others to, to get to the next place that they ultimately need to be as well. That is so, that's so on point. And I love what you said about serve others, help others. Others get going. Letitia Nicole, you started all this, by the way, with shine your light, by the way. You took us off track with this shine your light. Here's what I like for everyone to do. 
Um, I know that as an entrepreneur, many of you are entrepreneurs and you serve others. Um, you want to have more meaning in the world. And yeah, you'll, you'll make the money, but you want to have more meaning in the world. And you have more meaning by serving other folks. That's how you shine your light. So Robert right now is here. And he, you can hear Robert. Some of you can see Robert. Some of you listen to a podcast. Some of you listen to a conference call. Some of you hit the share button. Hit the, the share button. For those who hit the share button and paid this for it, we appreciate you because we believe in the giver's economy. The person that outgives the competition out earns the competition. The person that outgives the competition out earns the competition. So here's what we like to do. Robert, I like to recognize our entrepreneurs for a moment. I like to pause. Is that okay? I like to slow down. I like to recognize all the entrepreneurs like Daryl Mack and Betty Speaks and so many folks that are out there. They're serving other folks every single day. They're hitting the share button. They're writing notes on the digital note board. Some of you are hitting the heart button right now saying, yeah, I serve others. If you serve others, hit the heart button. Hit the like button. Just, 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 just pay this message for it. Here's what I'd like for you to do. I like for you to look right below the video and we want to honor you, the happy entrepreneur. We want to honor you, the speaker. We want to honor you, the coach. You, the person every day that's out there making an impact in the world. Yeah. Here's how you do that. Look below the video and write these words. I serve others by blank. I serve others by helping them transform their lives. I serve others by helping them make more sales with less effort. I serve others by helping them improve their health. Albert, I serve others by helping them write their book. Somebody's going to put, I serve others by helping them believe in themselves and change their mindset. We want to recognize you. You look right below the video. You look right below the video. And Robert, do they have their permission to promote their business? Do they have their, your permission to do that? Is that okay? 100%. That's the best way we can serve others. Wow. He said 100%. So the best way you can serve others, someone right now have the, has the goal of finding you. You're going to shine your light right now. You're going to look right below the video. Look right below the video. What's going on? I see you, Betty. And put these words, I serve others by dot, dot, dot. And after you put that, if you want to put your website down, you have our permission to do that. These videos, they often go viral. I get it. Um, but that's okay. Put your website down. Put your Facebook page down. Put your Twitter page down. We want folks to connect with you. What's up, Christy? Thanks for joining. What's up, Peg DeShane? What's up, Monica J. Smith? Thanks for joining. You look right below the video. And we're allowing you right now to spotlight your business. How do you do that? How do you do that? You're going to put, I serve others by dot, dot, dot writing their story. I serve others by helping them understand their, their finances. I serve others by helping them understand social media and the business. I want, as a tribe, this is not about us pushing out to you. It's about us all pulling into each other. So someone right now has the goal of finding you and I want to help them find you. So Christy, look right below the video. And Now, Robert, can you see right below the video? Can you see the comments coming up? Can you read uh, Marcia's Payne, she wrote a comic. Can you read what she does? You know what? It just refreshed for me. Oh, I got it right here. Mm -hmm. So Marissa says, I serve others by helping them get over their story and makes the shifts they need to create a life they really love. Oh, I love it. I love it. Can you can you also read below? Can you read below? Can you read Nova's? I don't see Nova's yet. Okay. She says, I serve others by creating platforms to connect thought leaders with the underserved. Thanks so much. Patsy put, I serve others by transforming their lives and working environmental internal de decor. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I think your screen froze for a minute there, Robert. But we're going to check back with Robert in just a moment just to make sure we can see him. Make sure it's not my screen. Can you hear me, Robert? Mic check, mic check. I can still hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you, but your screen is frozen. So you may kind of dial. You might just try to hit refresh and see if it refreshes for you. Um, Nina says, I serve others, helping them understand how to use social media for their business. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for putting that. Uh, let's see here. Put me on there. There you go. Um, Letitia Nicole said, I serve others by helping them conquer their fears to be all God designed them to be. Thank you so much. Sherry Crocker says, I serve others by hosting a talk show to help others learn how to live and be creative. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, let me get there. Uh -oh. uh, let me see here. Let me make sure I can get him back on. Just one second. I think I lost Robert, but give me, give me one second. Robert, are you there? I can, 
I can hear you okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to see if I can get my video turned oh, okay, back okay, on. Okay, okay, good, good, good. I just want to make sure I got you there. D. Burden said, I serve others by helping business owners improve their cash flow and collect. Thanks a lot. Eric, Erica Pador put, I serve others by increasing and providing content. Um, thank you so much on the Legacy Builder Show. Okay, I see you now, Robert. We're going to bring you back on, Robert. Check one, check two. I see you. Let me swap you on the other side, my man. Let me swap you on the other side. Um, Jay Veal put, I serve others by providing holistic and prescriptive tutoring services for students from five years to doctors. See, folks right now, they're not writing so much how many letters they have behind their name. They're not writing who their big clients are. They're writing how they serve other people. You look right below the video and you put how you serve. And then I want to understand how do they park their money? How, what are they doing and how are they doing that right now? So give me a second here. And then let's go in and see Douglas. Who, Douglas is out there. And then you and I, we're going to kick off. Man, we got a lot to go. Let's see what Douglas has. Hello, everyone. How you all doing? My name is Douglas Aze with Lago Financial Services, LLC. I am so excited to be a part of this great tribe, the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe. Today is my January 1st. And because of that, man, I want to share my thought of the week with the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe. You know why? Because you guys rock. You all are the reason why this country is growing and doing what it's supposed to do. You all are the engine that's fueling America. So because of that, I want to share my thought for the month with you. So here's the team. The team is, where are you packing your money? Very, very important. Think about it. Think about your money as a car, right? You go to the dealership, you purchase a car. What do you do? You have to pack it somewhere. You pack it on the street on the garage. Of course, you know when you pack it in the garage, it's safe, it's protected because you have the key to it, right? To the garage, it's safe and it's protected in there. Same thing with your money. Where are you packing your money? Are you packing it in a place where fraudsters can get it? Inflation can eat it up. Taxes can get it. Creditors can go after it. The IRS can put a tax lien on it. See, that's so important. So, Throughout the month, I'm going to be sharing tips to help you understand that when you earn your money, where the place you need to pack it so it's safe and it's protected from those stealers that's trying to get your money. So again, thank you so much. And listen, make it an awesome and a great day. Thank you. And I appreciate you. God bless. Bye-bye. Make it an awesome and a day and a great day. None other than the one and only himself. If you're meeting him for the very first time, Douglas is amazing. Douglas is incredible. Douglas is out of Largo, by the way, and he's serving folks, helping them understand how to grow their money, how to park their money, how to use finances to really build a retirement, um, really leave a legacy, really send their kids to a school of a choice, really pay off their home. And this is someone I've been knowing been doing this for over 15 plus years. For as long as I've been doing this, he's been doing this and just an incredible person. Thanks a lot for bringing your thoughts of the day. Now, Robert, he says something important. What's up, Sacconi Prince? He says something important. He said, today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. Now, I want you to imagine, Robert, how you felt back on December 31st, and you were excited. There was going to be a new year, Sherry Ford. Thanks for joining. Um, you were going to go after some new goals. You were going to go after some new clients. You were going to learn some new technology. Like this was going to be your year. You were going to seize the day, carpe diem, seize the moment. And that, that excitement when you woke up, you said, man, today's my January 1st. I've got to get going. I've got to get to the gym. No, no. I've got to do this on social media. I've got to read this book. But here's what I want you to know, Robert. And here's something that that, that Douglas has said, and here's something that's so important, is that every day can be your January 1st. And one of our core values here at the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, for those folks that are reading, is we have one mantra, we have one belief, and our belief is today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. That's right, today is my January 1st. There are new opportunities, it's my January 1st. There are new clients, it's my January 1st. I'm back on track again, it's my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. Do me a favor. 
favor. Look right below the video as we get ready to get kicked off. We're, we're, we're going to get going, but look right below the video and just write these words. Today is my January 1st. Write that down, Sherry Ford. Today is my January 1st. Write that down, CF Jackson. Today is my January 1st. Monique J. Smith, I see you. You do the weekly podcast. We've got to connect. Today is my what? January 1st. Now, why is that, Shay? Why is that? Because your past does not equal your future. Your past does not equal your future. Today is my January 1st. This is a mindset. This is a belief system. This is a mantra. And it's one of the cornerstones of what we believe in that every day that your feet hit that ground, it's January 1st. And that's just not just an emotion. That's just not a feeling. That is the belief system. Look right below the video right now and I put today is my January 1st. This is your time. This is your moment. This is your year. You will make a difference. You will make a dollar. Now, Robert, when you hear that, like Natisha Nicole who put today is my January 1st, Annette put today is my January 1st. When you hear today is my January 1st, I get a new start. I get to make it happen. I get to change the world. I can start slow, but I can finish strong because today is my January 1st. What's up, LaShonda? Thanks for joining. You right below the video today. No, not tomorrow. Today, not yesterday. Today is my January 1st. Robert, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st. Tell me, what does it mean to you when you hear today is my January 1st? And why don't you say that one time? Say today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. That's pretty good. Like Let's that. say it again. A little, a little more energy, a little more enthusiasm. Today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. You know, Robert, I believe it. Talk about that. When you hear that, what does that mean to you? What's going through your mind? What's up, Kia? And today is your January 1st. Nicole, your past does not equal your future. What does that mean? Talk to him, Robert. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I think about today is my January 1st, I think about the excitement, the, the optimism, the hopefulness that we have for the upcoming year, right? When we think about January 1st and we're so excited on December 31st because we know we have the year upcoming and we know that it's filled with possibilities mm -hmm. and we want to create just a greater year than we had in the years previous. And so that idea of today is my January 1st is us being filled with that optimism for what's yet to come and the things that we can create in the future to have not only what we want, but to do the things that we're destined to do. And so when I think about today is January 1st, just like you said, Jay, your, your past doesn't equal your future and every day can be your January 1st. You know, not only is tomorrow not promised today, but today has never been done before. You know, each day is a brand new day, a brand new set of possibilities that we've never quite experienced before. We've never lived in. So each day is genuinely a brand new day for us. And it, it represents those same possibilities, that same optimism and same opportunity that we have for the future to do the things that we were destined to do. You know, I love what you just said, Robert. You said, you know, Today is my January 1st. And I see the comments. Rhonda Johnson said, today is my January 1st. Dee Bolden said, today is my January 1st. Erica Padora says, today is my January 1st. And as you were saying that, you made a comment that was so true. They always say, tomorrow is not promised. But here's what I want you to know. Today's not promised either. You worry about tomorrow's not promised but today is not promised. You know, I heard a story once about a gentleman named James Brown. Now, James Brown is no longer with us and probably one of the baddest singers of all times and dancers and performers. The brother is just bad to the bone. And in his prime, in his prime, you talk about peak performers. In his time, there was an interview done with him right before his show. You talk about the characteristics of a high performer. We're gonna talk about that, the characteristics of a high performer. The interview asked him, to James, You've been doing this for a long time. He says, yes, I have. I've been doing this for a long time. What's up, Rhonda? And um, he says, so here's the question I have for you, James. Think about all your performances. And of all your performances, which one is your best? Now think about you. If you had to step back right now and you had to look back over your life, the last 30 days, the last 90 days, the last 365 days, and someone said, what day was your best that you gave it everything that you got? That was your best performance that day. They asked James Brown that question. Do you know what James Brown said? What did he say? My next show. 
See, my next show will be my best show because it gets better and better and better. And isn't that a mindset to have to say my next show is my best show? I haven't given my best show yet. Although people thought he was the greatest of all time, he still believed there was more left. Shay, why do you say that? Shay, why do you make that point? Good evening, Nikki Lee. Thanks for joining. Why do you make that point? Well, the reason I, I make that point is because we're going to talk about the top characteristics of peak performers. And myself and Robert don't have all the answers. Robert does something called entrepreneur dinners. And Robert, before I get into the peak performers and the characteristics, talk a little bit about why you decided what is entrepreneur dinners, why you decided to start this entrepreneur's dinner, and, and, and what is the mission of entrepreneur dinners? I hope I got that right, entrepreneur dinners. As he's doing that, by the way, someone look right below the video, or look right below the video, and just write these words. My next show is my best show. <laughs> Hashtag James Brown. My next show is my best show. Hashtag James Brown. I'm going to say that next time. Someone come, next time I come off the stage and say, <laughs> Shay, which one of your shows is your best show? My next show is my best show. My next guest is my best, my best guest. Why? Because today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. Today, well, it's my January 1st. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited because when I talked to Robert just this past weekend and, and I asked Robert, I said, Robert, do you mind if being on the show? Can, do you mind sharing what you're doing with Entrepreneur's Dinner? Robert didn't ask me the question of how many viewers do you have? He didn't say, uh, 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 what can I sell on the show? He, he, didn't, he, did, he didn't say, well, can you give me my graphics so I can look good? He didn't say any of that. He said, man, if, if I'm free, I'm there to serve. Let me check. He says, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm open and I'm, I'm willing to serve. So he showed up today to serve. He showed up today to give. He showed up today to change someone's life and make a difference. You know what? Robert's next interview is his best interview. But right now, baby, you got his best right now. <laughs> because he's here with us. Check this out. L LaDonda uh, Ladora Bonds Border says, my next show is my best show. Jeanette, Jennifer Harris is on. What's up, Jennifer Harris? It is always a pleasure. She's about to have a huge event out there. It's going to be amazing. My next show is my best show. What's up, Wayne Carr? Now, you got Warren on the phone. Now, I don't know how you got Warren on, the, you got Warren on here, but Warren, my man, is on here. Warren, my next show is my best show, by the way. Sherry Cross said my next show is my best show okay you know what you know what <laughs> Robert's next entrepreneur dinner is his best entrepreneur dinner and I'm planning on being there. I don't know what it is but I'm asking for a ticket so see if I can hang out with you guys there <laughs> by the way all right Robert take it away Maria says great topic and great discussion love the energy hit the heart button hit the share button, pay this message for it. Look, we show up because we believe one thing. We believe one thing here at the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe. And it's one of the things that I talked to Robert about. And Robert said, Shay, I'm all in. Shay, you can count on me. Shay, don't worry about it. And one of the things that we believe is we believe that the results that show up in your life, what's up Janelle Montgomery, are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. The results that show up in your life, they're just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. So one of the things that we know about all top producers, about all folks out there who are a high performer, I'm going to give you one thing. and I'm going to go, we're going to find about Entrepreneur Dinner. Don't worry about that. But Rhonda, as you're listening, Maria, as you're listening, Sherry, as you're listening, Albert Watkins, as you're listening, Warren, who builds fanatic communities as you're listening. This is a fanatic community. This is a community of entrepreneurs who are happy. And I know people tell me sometimes, Robert, they say it's an oxymoron. You can't be happy and an entrepreneur. That's not, that's not even possible. Yeah, it is possible. We can be happy, but we're not naive. We can be happy, but we don't believe every day is rainbows, cupcakes, and unicorns. We can be happy, but we don't have to run around jumping and smiling and shining all the time. We can be happy and we understand we make mistakes. Our stuff stinks sometimes, but we get back on track. We make it happen. We can be happy, but we don't work for free. Someone write that down. <laughs> happy, but I don't work for free. Someone write that down. I love to say that. Happy, but we don't work for free. We are indeed happy, happy entrepreneurs, happy entrepreneurs, 
but we don't work for free. Happiness is on the inside. Happiness is what we believe and happiness is not about our money. So everybody who's part of the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, everyone who's joined this movement, we appreciate you. We love you. Every time you make a comment, every time you write something down, every time you share this message, every time you pay it forward, you put a smile on someone else's face because today is your January 1st and your next show, well, <laughs> I believe it's your best show. So here's what I'm going to say about top performers. And then we're going right to Robert, by the way. Jennifer Harris, thank you so much for the comment. Uh, J John C., you got John C. Butler on here, bro. You bring out the all-stars. She said, today is my January 1st. You got Robert Candelero on here, man. Robert, how do you bring these people out, Robert? How do you bring them out, man? Talk to me about that. How do you do it? I just, I just want to know the secret. That's all. Can a brother understand the secret? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but before you talk about entrepreneur dinner, talk about characteristics that I want to share of all top producers, top performers. And maybe you have a characteristic. And if you have one, you put the characteristics of a top performer below. Because maybe it's something that you've observed in your mentor. Maybe it's something you read somewhere else. Maybe it's something that you believe in. We're going to go over some characteristics today. Don't worry about that. Or this evening, or this morning, or this afternoon, wherever it is for you, by the way. Candy said, I'm happy, but I don't work for free. I, I know that's right. Holla at your girl. <laughs> I know that's right. Maria says, happy preneurs. Love it. Love it. Here's what we know about top performers. They put in the work day after day. I'm going to ask Robert, that happens with his entrepreneurs. They put in the work day after day. Shay, what's the characteristics of a peak performer? <laughs> okay. Someone put number one. They put in the work day after day. They have the right habits. Becoming a high performer takes significant effort, no matter what you're doing. There's no way around putting in the work day after day. Robert drinks this mug. I don't know if he has this jug. He'll show you the jug that he drinks. It's not, I have a jug, it's, I have this little jug here. He drinks this big old like liter of water, right? And, and the reason I put in that, you gotta put in the work day after day, is I run marathons and I'm a runner, right? I run five marathons, countless half marathons. I lost track on the 10Ks, the 5Ks, the 10 milers, the eight miles, I lost track on that. But here's what I know. As you're watching right now, you got to put in the work day after day to be a top performer. So we can talk about going to the gym. We can read books about going to the gym. We can watch videos about going to the gym. We can join masterminds about going to the gym. But guess what? Until we go to the gym and do the reps, nothing happens. Now, Robert's an athlete. He gets it. Robert, take a moment and talk about what it means to put in the work day after day. For, those, for my folks, my digital note takers out there, look right below the video, look right below the video and put down number one characteristic. This is just one of five I'm gonna share. They put in top producers, put in the work day after day. Someone put that right below the video. Put that right below the video right now. Top performers, they put in the work day after day. They put in the work day after day. Jennifer Harris is out there. She puts in the work day after day. Mario Reynolds. Hey, what's up, Mario Reynolds? If you follow Mario Reynolds, and I follow him, he puts in the work day after day. He is consistent. Why is he consistent? Let me, let me um, tell you why. Because people form habits, and habits form futures. I'll say it again. People form habits, and habits form futures. So let's go over to Robert Kohler the founder of Entrepreneur's Dinner. So let's ask him, you know, top performers, what it means to put in the work day after day. And maybe he'll give us an example of what he's doing as he does what he does from a wellness perspective, from a health perspective, because it's not easy. It's not easy. Robert, over to you, my man. Yeah, thank you, Che. You know, first and foremost, um, we all got to give thanks to Che, che right now. I mean, you talk about serving. You consistently outserve everybody else in the room. And this show was just an example of that. You're continuing to pour in other people. You're pouring into the audience. You're pouring into your network, your group. I mean, you continue to serve. You serve me throughout the weekend. So, I mean, really, if you guys um, if you guys are like me and you you just love Che and the work that he's doing, go ahead and just drop a note of a thank you to Che for, for having great guests on for continuing to pour in other people and and sincerely i appreciate you brother i appreciate Thank exactly you. um all the work that you're doing um and i i apologize in advance i might have to move around just a little bit That's so fine, you man. guys they, are watching they don't mind it's a me. live show you can move everyone everyone tell robert it's okay just say robert you're doing fine he's like is my lighting okay i've got to move around it just to say robert it's okay 
Robert, you're doing fine. Let's give Robert a little encouragement. Robert is putting in the work. <laughs> He's like, my lights keep changing on me. My, my internet is freezing. My upload download speed ain't really working. Oh. Shay, what's up? But Robert, you look great. Robert, you're I, doing well. All right, take it I, away, Robert. I appreciate that, brother. So, I mean, you know, you talk about high performers and how they put in the work day after day. And becoming a high performer just takes significant effort. Right. Like there's no way around putting in the work. I mean, if you look at the habits of, you know, highly successful athletes, um, a lot of the top athletes are going to put in time immediately, even after the major games. You know, and they want to do that to lock in the improvement performances, uh, the games, from the op um, you know, off season or what have you. And I look at some of the greatest entrepreneurs as well. Right. Because this this game of business is a game. Um, you have you're constantly competing on a 24 hour basis. Um, there really isn't any off season. And so putting in the work day after day means consistency. And one of the greatest things that I've learned from some of the mentors I've worked with is that consistency is the key to success. Mm. Right. So if consistency is the key to success. And that means putting in work day after day is going to be the metric for the success that we have. Now, for me, Che, you mentioned uh, me being an athlete. So I'm a former, um, you know, NCAA athlete and uh, black belt in Taekwondo from years back. And you get I it. Former, to... former NCAA athlete. What, what sport did you play? Played basketball, man. Point guard. You played basketball? Get out of here. I did. did. I played basketball. I, um, I did uh, Taekwondo, a little bit of MMA. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to test his skills. I'm a little older than Robert. The next <laughs> time I'm back in Houston, we're going to put the camera on, and we're going to see what he can do one-on-one. -on -one. Now, he's 10. He can play a little basketball. I, I still got a little bit left in me, by the way. So we're going we to have to get on the court. I'm, I'm going to put the camera on. That's what we're going to do a show on the court. That would be cool. <laughs> That that'll be cool. I don't I don't know if you want to do that, brother. I'm just I'm giving you a forewarning, man. I mean, you first have to of drink all, a I lot get, of water. I get a, first of all, I, I get a couple points just for my age. Okay, I get a couple points for my age. All right, so I start off about ten points ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that, man. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. But um, yeah, you know, being a former, being a um, um, a fellow athlete, you know, you know the importance of pouring into yourself. You know, and being consistent with the work that you're doing. I mean, you're drinking water right now. I got my gallon of water. And a lot of the stuff that we do on a day in, day out basis is continually putting the work in every single day. Now, I want to give I want to give the audience a little tip. Um, this is something that I know from working with uh, well over a hundred entrepreneurs, um, all all different areas of success, anywhere from you know just starting off in business and not really sure what the next steps are, all the way to co-founders of Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I found for the overwhelming majority of these entrepreneurs is that they start off their day so that they can be in a peak performance mindset. Mm. Right? So they're making sure that their state, their mindset is going to be in a way that allows them to have peak performance. So what does that mean? What that means is they're typically waking up early, right? So a number of CEOs are going to be waking up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., et cetera. Um, they're exercising on a daily basis, whether that's in the morning or sometime afterwards. Um, they're doing some sort of mindfulness or meditation or reading the Bible or scripture or, or contemplation or prayer, um, which is setting their intentions for the day. And they're also just making sure that they know exactly what their goals are. So they know what they want, right? Jay, you mentioned this earlier. If you don't know what you want, you're going to get almost anything, mm -hmm. right? And so they're doing these things because they're, they're planning that, that guidepost. They're planning the direction for where they want to go. And part of doing the work each and every day is doing that, what you might, what you might call road work, is doing the work that's preparing you to make sure that you can perform at a peak state day in and day out. And so what that looks like for me and for many others is developing a morning routine, mm. right? Because um, there's, there's something called um, just uh, – it's, it's really called the theory of constraints. The what uh, now? The theory of constraints. The theory of constraints. Okay, I, I want to hear this. I mean, I like the concept of, of own the morning, own the day, but I want to hear a little bit about the theory of constraints because I don't know if I've, I've heard that before. So this is good. For everyone that's listening right now, I want you to tune in like you never tuned in before, listen with new ears. And, and for those that are listening, some of you can't watch because you're listening to the podcast or the conference call. Um, but if you're watching, watch with new eyes. Let's talk about the theory of constraint. Robert, break that down for us, please. So at a very high level, the theory of constraints 
means that you put constraints or uh, things in place uh, each day so you don't have to make too many decisions. You know exactly what you're going to do before you do it. Now, what are some examples of that? If you ever looked at President Obama mm -hmm. or perhaps Mark Zuckerberg, you'll notice that they're constantly wearing same clothes, right? So Obama uh, would often have a black suit or a navy blue suit. Mm -hmm. And those were the only two suits that he wore, or Mark Zuckerberg will usually wear the same team shirt. And this wasn't a fashion reason that they were doing it. It's because they have so many decisions that they're making throughout the day. They don't want to get decision fatigue, right? Because as a CEO, as the, the leader of the free world, you're responsible for making some very important decisions. And so figuring out what you're going to wear throughout the day is not really one of those important decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that relate to you and me? Well, we, not, we may not need to make the number of decisions that a President Obama or Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook may need to make, but we have to make a lot of important decisions. And so one of those decisions that we should not have to make is deciding when we're going to wake up, making sure that we're doing the things that are going to put us in a peak state, right? Mm -hmm. So those things that we just mentioned, the, the meditation practice or the contemplation, the, the waking up, um, something like drinking water. But doing the things that are going to put you in a peak state, those should not be, those shouldn't be of question. Those should be mandatory, right? Because if success is on your your field, then doing the things that are going to make you successful should be non-negotiable, right? So this theory of constraints is just the idea of putting constraints around your day and and on a daily basis that enable you to have the most success possible. Now, does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So there's something called decision fatigue. I like that. I like the theory of constraints and making sure that we're focused on the things that we should be focused on. And one of the things Robert's doing right now is Robert's sharing with us the characteristics of top performers, the characteristics of top performers. Yes, he's a former athlete. I didn't know that, by the way. He played basketball. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. And he's also been on the other side of the world. He's also an entrepreneur. And so he's sharing with us, how does your morning routine impact your day? How does the number of decisions you have to make impact your day? So rule, so characteristic number one was they put in the work each and every day. See, that's the key, each and every day. They didn't say they're weekend heroes. They just wake up one day and say, let me just go do as much as I can and then take a break. I got to rest. Sure, there'll come a time where we'll have to slow down. But today, well, today is not that day. Today is not that day. Robert, how did you... What was one reason you, you, you decided to get into this entrepreneur world? And what would you say to the persons out there listening right now? And they're waiting for characteristic number two, right? And characteristic number two of a top performer is they look for opportunities to learn and grow with each task or assignment. Let me say that again. Let me say it again. Someone write that right below the video. Sherry, if you can, write that right below the video. Or C.F. Jackson or Letitia or someone whoever's out there right now, write Top characteristic number two, they look for opportunities to learn. Let me say it again. They look for opportunities to learn and grow with every assignment or task. Let me say it again a little slower so you can write that down because I don't want you to miss that. They look for opportunities to learn. But see, some people don't hear the second part. And grow with every task or assignment. So this weekend is a classic example. This weekend I had an opportunity to hang out and support the conference as sponsorship for influencers uh, by none other than Roberto, Roberto Candelara. And it was an amazing event, amazing event. And I had an opportunity to do something that I'd never done before. I'd never been at a live event and decided I was going to be bold and take out the camera that I'm using right now with you guys and say, you know what? This thing is a camera. It's not just a video. It's a camera. And so it should be able to take pictures in a perfect world. And, and so we decided to use it to take some photos. And, you know, it was it was a learning experience. But I had fun. I had fun. Now, I wasn't wasn't under any pressure because no one was saying, well, I'm paying you. So you got to do this and do that. In fact, I was able to tell a couple people, hey, I'm just freelancing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have to do anything right now. And it felt good. And, and it felt good to do that. Robert, as you're listening right now, um, share what it means to look for new opportunities to learn and maybe share, share maybe a, a time in your life where you had to learn 
something new from a task that was given to you or an assignment and, and, and how that helped benefit you today. And as, you, as you're thinking about that, and that's kind of going through your mind right now, that you might be, some of you might be wanting to say, why are you talking about top performers, Shay? Shay, why are you talking about things that, that people need to do or should to do? Why is that important right now? And, and, and one of the things, one of the reasons I want to, I want to share that with you is a good friend was on here earlier this week and, and, he, and he wrote a book. And the book was Refuse to Live Talented and Broke. And, and that became our mantra. We were saying that seven times a day for the next seven days. I refuse to live talented and broke. And so I thought about that. If you refuse to do that, he broke that thing down and that'll be our book. I think I have it somewhere. Let me see if I have it over here. Oh yeah, here it is. Delano, Delano, I don't know if they can see it or not. Delano Johnson wrote the book. And it's a great book, by the way. It'll be our reading for next month. I refuse to live talented and broke. And, but in order to do that, there's some things you have to do. He outlines them in the book. But when I met Robert, I'm like, man, Robert's, this is what Robert's doing. He's doing things that's going to help him impact his community and, and impact his life and change lives. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me share why that's important. And we're going to come back about they look for opportunities to learn and grow in every assignment. But as you're out there right now, as you're listening, what's up, Annette? What's up? As you're listening, thanks so much, Sherry. We appreciate you. As you're listening, someone look right below the video. Look right below the video and write these words. I refuse to live talented and broke. Just put that down. I refuse to live what? Talented and broke. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag, I am enough. I am enough. I'm enough. Robert's going to give you what you need right now. Robert's a motivational speaker, by the way. He's available for conference calls. He's available to speak live. He's available to speak to your team or your organization. But let's, let's hear it for a second, and we're going to come right back. I refuse to live talented and broke. How did that change me? Let's talk about that for a moment. I live in a city where there are more creative people per square mile than any other place on the planet. Question is, how many of them are successful? How many are just like I was, talented and broke? Being broke is more than just not having money. It's failure to turn opportunities into profitable businesses and relationships that last. <laughs> My mother always said, people perish for lack of knowledge. A compass takes you in the direction of your destiny, but knowledge of obstacles and distractions will ensure you arrive safely. My mentor once said to me, if I had half your talent, I'd have four times my wealth. Since then, I made a promise to God. If he would help me unlock my earning potential, I would pay it forward and help others do the same. That's why I wrote this book. Because God made us too talented to live our lives broke. And that includes you. Talented and broke. Someone do me a favor, look right below the video, look right below the video, and make that decoration for yourself or for someone else. Just write these words. Look right below the video and write, I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag, I am enough. Hashtag, I am enough. We're walking you through how to do that. We're going to give you some characteristics that's going to help you. You implement any one of these ideas because I refuse to live what? Talented. Oops. I refuse to live talented and broke. I refuse to live talented and broke. Um, hashtag, I am enough. Yeah, you're enough right now. You are enough. Robert's gonna talk about what it, what it means to look for new opportunities and what it means to, to take on a, 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 a craft or assignment and learn something from it. Robert, tell us about a time where that's happened for you in, in your life and, and how that helped benefit you. And as I see, Dwayne Reynolds is joining. What's up, Dwayne? Thanks a lot. I, I love you. Um, Maria, thanks so much for joining. 
all of you, want to encourage you all to join us over at the happyentrepreneurstribe.com. Again, www.happyentrepreneurstribe.com. That's where the magic happens. And that's where a handful of us come together to support, to encourage, and to provide the resources necessary so we can execute the vision we have for the people we were called to serve. That is the mission of the Happy Entrepreneur Show. And that is to provide the resources necessary so we can really, we can, we can actually support those people we were called to serve. So you have a vision for yourself. You have a vision for your loved ones. You have a vision for the people you were called to serve. And in order for you to do that, you need the resources to do that. Without those resources, it's not possible. And that vision, I happen to believe in God, that vision didn't come from you. That vision came from God, just like Noah. Noah in the Bible was given a vision, but he couldn't execute that vision if he didn't have a hammer. If he didn't have a nail, if he didn't have people to help him put the boat together, it's just not possible. And maybe that's where you are. And that's why I'm glad you showed up. That's why you are a winner. That's why you are a champion. That's why you have greatness inside you. You're already a top performer. We're only talking about the things you need to do so you can execute and achieve the resources that you need. Nikki, thanks a lot for joining. I refuse to live talented and broke. Hashtag I'm enough. Robert, I'm going to kick it over to you, man. I got, I, got, I got a little carried away, but that, that always hits me right there. Because sometimes we have these shows and it's, it's for making sure people are encouraged and motivated and inspired. And I know you do that at the Entrepreneur Dinner. And we're going to get to that. We're going to talk about this Entrepreneur Dinner that the brother is doing, this business that he started. But right now, let's give him another characteristic. Go ahead and share what it means to take on an assignment and to learn from that assignment. You know, one of the things that I want you who are listening to keep in mind is this. Life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. Life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. And the reason why I share this with you is because I want you to keep that in mind as I'm, I'm talking to you about the characteristic that Shay just mentioned. So as entrepreneurs, we're naturally going to be required to continue learning because uh, by definition, if you're not learning and growing, then you're what? You're dying. Mm -hmm. You're deceasing. You're decreasing. And so by nature, if we want to grow as entrepreneurs in our business and our, our, our personal, our relationships, then we must grow. In order to grow, we must learn. So in those situations where, you know, if, you, if you're a solopreneur, right, so you're growing your own business, um, you're going to be responsible for more than one aspect of growing your business. You're responsible for the sales. You're responsible for the marketing. You're responsible for the operations. You're responsible for finances, all these things. By necessity, we must grow. We must take on new assignments. But the thing about it is, as we're growing as entrepreneurs, even if you're in you know, a full-time job right now and you're trying to build a business on the side so that eventually you can become a full-time entrepreneur, or if you want to continue building a business on the side and you never even want to leave your full-time job, you just want to mm -hmm. grow that business so you have more freedom, the question we should be asking ourselves is, what is this lesson trying to teach me? Right, because we're constantly going through those ups and downs. Life is never stagnant. Life is always dynamic. Mm -hmm. And so we're moving up, we're moving down, we're, we're going through peace, we're going through valleys. Um, and we must be asking ourselves, what is this lesson trying to teach me? Now, Jay, when you mentioned that top performers are always looking to learn, they're always looking to grow with every assignment, um, it doesn't matter where we are, right? Whether we're, we're in that full-time job and we're doing a job that maybe isn't maximizing our full potential, our full potential. I remember back when I was working uh, previously for a company and, you know, I just felt like I had so much more to offer. I knew that I wanted to be uh, expressing myself creatively more. I knew that I wanted to reach out to more people and specifically I wanted to help entrepreneurs, but I didn't feel like in that role, I was able to give the most of myself. But things began shifting when I began asking myself, what is this trying to teach me? And some of the things that I learned from that, that job were previously I had the mindset that it was um, you know, negative and it wasn't allowing me to express myself. Mm -hmm. When I began asking that question, I realized that I was getting skills. I was developing skill sets like organizing. Um, I was beginning uh, to be able to connect with people within inside the company that were enabling me to develop relationships to take me to the next level. 
Um, you know, and there's, there's constantly times where, for example, right now, um, you know, I'm doing a lot of sales in my business. I'm doing a lot of sales calls. I'm doing sales conversations and I'm continuing to learn as a, as a result of that process. And I'm by no means as good as, um, you know, some of those are that are on the call. Shay, you know, is a master at sales. I know you're a sales diagnoser. But as a result of me being an entrepreneur and wanting to take it to the next level, I need to learn and take from that assignment because I know that life is not just happening to me. Life is happening for me. You know, I love, love how you mentioned that. And thanks a lot for being very authentic and, and sharing that. You know, I know that you played basketball. Um, you played basketball in college. I myself, I got cut from the team, by the way. Um, little known story in the seventh grade. I still think I was the best player out there. A guy by the name of uh, Mr. Uh, Gilbert, by the way, Mr. Gilbert, he cut me in the seventh grade. I went and looked at my name on the list and it wasn't there. And I thought I was the best player out there, by the way. Um, I thought it was because I was short, by the way. I still think he was biased to me. He might be watching right now. Mr. Gilbert, you did me a favor because the next year I decided to come back out again. I got cut again, by the way, just to let you know I didn't make the team, which has some success story to tell you. I got cut again. <laughs> I got cut. Just first cut. I didn't, I didn't make the first cut, man. Um, but, but, but I decided that I was going to be on the team. And I was going to be a person keeping the stats. Code for water boy. But I got so good at learning the game and I studied the game so much that I could see what was going on while they were out there. And one of the things that taught me is they said, hey, sometimes you can't be in the game, but it doesn't mean you can't learn and you can't appreciate the game because you might not be able to play every position there. I can't play any positions on the court, but that doesn't mean I couldn't play a position off the court. And so that was a learning exercise for me. And I said, you know, I might not be able to always get there, but I can still learn and I can still appreciate it. Do you mind, Robert, sharing maybe a story that, that you had when you were, you were playing ball and, and uh, maybe there was a win, maybe there was a loss and a lesson that you learned that you now apply the business? Because for me, that was in the seventh grade many, many years ago. And I'm still mad about that, by the way. I'm still teed off. I still think I should have made that team, by the way. Um, both years, <laughs> both years. Uh, my good friend Derek Penny, he might be watching, by the way, we were freshmen and, and he made the varsity team back year. I was like, God darn, how do you go for like ninth grade year on the varsity? He was just that good and went on to, to do some wonderful things in the NCAA. But anyway, my, my point is, what's a lesson that you learned um, while you were playing ball that you can that you can really apply to business? And this is, y'all might be wondering, how does it relate to me? What's, what's my takeaway? My takeaway is that sometimes, and Dr. Willie Jolly said it best, there's going to be a setback. It's nothing but a setup for a comeback. And so Robert played sports. He knows something about a setback. Robert played sports, and he knows the best teams don't win the championship. Robert played sports, and he understands that success is a team sport. We're stronger together. And so how that relates to you is why he's sharing the characteristics that he learned. You might be thinking, I've got to have the right people on my team in order for me to really be as successful, impact, and serve as many people as I want to serve. And the Happy Entrepreneur Show, we want to be on your team. You know, we want to be one of the resources um, that provide you the lessons that you need in business, uh, whether sales, marketing, branding, automation, or sometimes it's just a mindset shift. Maybe we, we, maybe right now you're thinking, Shay, this is a little uncomfortable for me, but it's within my grasp. It's a little uncomfortable for me, but it's within my grasp. Robert, take a moment and talk about a lesson that you learned and mm. um, how that can apply to business. You know, um, as you were talking, you were talking about um, how you, you tried out for the seventh grade team and you were cut. And um, it reminded me back when I was playing for my high school team. Mm -hmm. um, I was a sophomore. I was fortunate enough to be able to play for the varsity team as a See, sophomore. There you go. There you go. You, you had to get on the varsity team. See, I tell you, Spend myself I, on the back, I right? Even, I couldn't even make the freshman team or the JV team. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was I was really fortunate. I was really fortunate. I um I had um I had a good coach and I had good teammates and um, the type of teammates that were really building towards something and we really had a lot of promise. But you know, that my sophomore year I was able to make the varsity team and then by junior year, you know, naturally when you have expectations, you guys are expecting to do better. And as somebody who's on the varsity team, you know, your second year in the high school, people are expecting you to do well. Mm -hmm. Well. At that point, I wasn't meeting expectations, right? Um, I wasn't progressing to the level that the, the other people, the coaches, um, even some people on the team expected me to. And there was a point where the coach, uh, his name is Coach Bass, Coach Jody Bass, mm -hmm. um, and he told me, he said, Rob, you know, you're one of the better players, but right now you're not cutting it for us. 
and I'm thinking about putting you down to JV. What makes this worse, Che, is that just before our starting point guard, uh, he had found himself in an injury. And I became the starting point guard for a little bit of time. And then as soon as he came back, I moved right back to backup. And it really hurt my confidence. And then shortly after that, the coach said, you know, Rob, you're really not meeting expectations. We may have to, we may have to move you down. We may have to cut you from the team and put you down somewhere else. And the craziest thing happened, Che, I, I found this just reservoir. I found this just a pool of energy and resources. And during a practice, man, I just, I went crazy. I was scoring all these points. I was making all these assists. I was doing all these things that I had previously never done before. And the reason for that was because my back was against the wall. He had told me that if I didn't perform up to expectations, he was going to demote me. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't performing up to expectations because I didn't have you know, I didn't have that gun to the head. I didn't have my back against the wall. I didn't have something that was pushing me to do something more uh, than I was doing and what I was capable of. Um, and shortly after that practice, you know, I, I did well. And then we played another game and I ended up scoring, you know, uh, 20 points or something like that. And he said that he was going to keep me on. But what that taught me, Che, is that sometimes we have to have our back against the wall in order for us to rise to the occasion. Sometimes we have to take a leap of faith doing the thing that's the most scary for us, doing the thing that we don't know what's going to be on the opposite side because others have doubted us in the past in order for us to take that leap forward. Um, and so that's something that I never forgot. That's something that I'll always take with me is that sometimes we do need our back against the wall. Sometimes we do need to take that leap of faith and, and pray that on the other side things work out. And oftentimes they do. You know, that, that's so true. Sometimes you have, you have to stay in the present moment. You have to be present, but there's lessons that you can learn from that. And thanks so much for being authentic. Thanks for sharing. I, I thought your life was perfect. I didn't even know they were, you was on the verge of getting cut from the team. Um, great job. And, you know, it's all about being in the present moment. My mentor used to say, wherever you are, be there. Be there. Be present. Be right where you are. Because the future, by definition, doesn't exist. Let's see what Dr. Kenneth Thigpen had to say about that. Because she's someone that we certainly believe in as well. Hello, it's your girl, Dr. Kenneth Thigpen, also known as Dr. K, founder of Rise Women's Network. And Rise Women's Network is pleased to present to you hashtag next sister up. I'm here with you today in the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, and today is my January 1st. Here's your thought of the week. Mindfulness matters. Dare to be present. You know what, last week Shay was talking about sales mindfulness and I got super excited because mindfulness is something that I practice, that my clients practice, and something that is important and applies to all areas of our life. But what happens is many times we have all this brain chatter that's going on. Something like, you know, when you're in a client meeting and you're thinking about what you're going to cook for dinner or what you need to pick up from the grocery store in order to cook that dinner. Or maybe you're at home with family and friends and you're starting to think about that client meeting and all the should have, would have, could have that could have taken place. Well, none of that is being present and in the moment. And all of that, again, is that brain chatter. Here's the thing. If you are not present, you are missing the entire point. So here are the four A's in order to be mindful and present. The first one is being aware. The second one is acknowledging. The third one is accepting, and the fourth one is taking action. You see, someone once said, don't let your future steal your present. I'm your girl, Dr. Kenneth Thigpen, with your thought of the week. Mindfulness matters, and I triple dog dare you to be present this week. Make it a great day. I love it. Mindfulness matters. Mindfulness matters. Mindfulness matters. Someone look right below the video. What's up, Sean LeRae Brinkley? She's in the house. She's, just, she's absolutely loving you, by the way. She's loving what you're doing out there. What's up, Douglas Tufts? Thanks for joining. Ann Tuff, thanks for joining. Someone look right below the video. Look right below the video and just write these words. Mindfulness matters. Mindfulness matters. You must be present in the present moment. And that is so true. Sometimes now it's easy to be distracted. I've got, a, I've got an Apple Watch, by the way, and it lights up and it's always kind of telling me buzzes, 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 what's going on. In fact, I had to cut off the notifications, by the way. It's on the phone. It's even while we're going here. So much is going on, but you've got to be in the present moment. Because if not, 
you'll miss it. We'll come back to mindfulness at another time. I want to talk about that. But, but Robert, you are the founder of Entrepreneur Dinners. Tell us what is Entrepreneur's Dinners, because some people are hearing it for the first time. They're wondering what in the LL Cool J is he talking about Entrepreneur's Dinner? So where is it? What's the mission of it? And why you decide to establish it? And as those folks who are joining right now that says mindfulness matters, like Sherry Crockett is out there. She says, I live by that quote, life is not happening to you, but for you. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Something else that was shared just now. Uh, talk about Entrepreneur Dinners. What is it? What's it about? And who should attend? Yeah, so Entrepreneur's Dinner is a curated invite-only event that brings together entrepreneurs from across invite the country. Invite-only? So I got to be invited to this thing? I you love You got to be invited. Okay, I'm, sorry. Right? I'm sorry for interrupting. Keep on, keep on going. <laughs> I heard invite-only. That means you just can't go. You've got to have a special invite. I love that. I love that. Tell us about it. Yeah, absolutely. So it's um, it's an event where we gather entrepreneurs from across the country to grow their business together through relationships. Now, something that's important to me is um, I believe, we believe that entrepreneurs and leaders have the ability to change the world in a way that most others never, never can, never aspire to. And so we want to support that. And part of the things that we, the way that we support that is we help entrepreneurs to gain emotional clarity to fulfill their vision, to meet one to two life-changing mentors per quarter, and to form profitable partnerships to reach your financial goals even faster. Now, how we do that is with Entrepreneur's Dinner. Now, Entrepreneur's Dinner is uh, our events that are hosted at beautiful private residences. We have private chefs that come in. They serve these delicious four-course meals. Uh, we have bartenders that are serving your favorite mixed drinks and videographers that are capturing the entire event so that you can look back on the night that changed your life forever. Wow. Why did you decide to start this? Uh, Marie Rio says, I think I've attended three or four of Rob's events. Entrepreneur Dinner, by the way. Um, why did you decide to... Um, to start this, um, what was the the reasoning for it? You could do a whole lot of things with your time. Yeah, Marie, Marie's great. She's been to a few of our dinners and um, appreciate her support and all the other entrepreneurs that come. You know, and, and part of the reason, uh, Che, that I ended up starting this was um, in 2015, my dad had a double lung transplant. Mm. Um, he has an autoimmune disease called scleroderma. And at the time, I was living in Detroit, Michigan. Um, uh, he was in Dallas, Texas, and I was really worried about what was going on with him. And so I wanted to move back uh, to the house to kind of help out around the house. But while I was there, um, I connected with friends in Dallas, Texas, and I realized that I had a lot of entrepreneurs that were just working on really cool and interesting projects, but they didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to find a way to connect them but in a way that was away from the traditional networking, um, all the stuff that I dislike about networking. I mean, from uh, you know people just handing out business cards before they even have a chance to, to really ask you a question or connect with you or know anything about your business. They're shoving a business card down your throat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, We didn't want to host it at like a hotel or most of the other places that are being hosted um, where networking events are being hosted. Instead, what we want to do is we want to put some personality into it. We wanted to have some intimacy. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we did is we decided to host it at a home, right? Because what's more personable than someone's home? A private, uh, uh, like, like, like a private residence? That's right, a private wow. residence. Okay, so, so it wasn't just an Airbnb. You didn't show up at Airbnb. It was someone's home that was actually living in the home? That's right. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and beyond that, we ended up, uh, we had private chefs come in because what's a better way to, you know, to connect than over food? right, than breaking bread together. Uh, I told people not to bring their business cards. I told them business cards were banned. I don't want any of the sorts because I wanted people to focus on just cultivating genuine, you know, organic relationships. Mm -hmm. And so we had all of our entrepreneurs to stand inside a big circle. And the focus was on giving first, right? The same thing that this, this network is about, the same thing that this show is about, is about giving first. And that's what we wanted to make the focus of Entrepreneur's Dinner. And so we had each entrepreneur to share what their business is, what their biggest challenge or hurdle in business is, mm -hmm. and then most importantly, how they could help others. Right, that mm -hmm. focus on giving. And so all the entrepreneurs not only had a chance to share uh, what they were doing, what they were up to in the world, but also how they could help others. And it was from there after that first event, somebody at the very end of it, I remember we were standing around the table and um, we were standing around the table and it was like, uh, like a Thanksgiving vibe. Like people who didn't know each other at all before were standing shoulder to shoulder um, like a family. And um, it really stuck out to me. And somebody said, so when's the next one? 
I said, okay, we, we got a business here. So that was our first one. Uh, we've since hosted nine Entrepreneur's Dinner events. We've had people from all over the country come out uh, to attend these events. We've uh, upgraded them from just being at homes. We've done one on, for example, at a 75-foot catamaran yacht. I mean, you you would have loved it, man. I mean, you're talking about being, you know, being on the water, just having a good time, you know. Wow, that's uh, cool having some drinks and stuff, but it all came from that that initial purpose of wanting to connect people in a genuine way so that they could grow their business through the relationships that are in the room. Because what we know is that not only um, are relationships important, but being in the right rooms are important as well. Wow. And what type of entrepreneurs um, should attend? Is it for startups? Is it can I, can someone that's been in business? Could it be for someone who's, who's very, very seasoned? Because the concept of bringing these entrepreneurs together to kind of support each other and to network is, is a little different. It's called entrepreneur dinners. So what type of entrepreneur should attend? Some folks are joining us. Uh, Sean says, love the concept right now that she's listening and the idea. Talk a little bit about who should attend. What type of entrepreneurs would, would this be a good fit for? Yeah, it's a great question. So what we found is that we have the full gamut of entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally anyone from who's just starting off and really doesn't know what the next steps are in order for them to start in business um, to someone who's you know already built multiple six-figure or seven-figure businesses and they're just looking for the next stage and they want to connect with other people all the way to co-founders of Fortune 500 companies. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had um, last year we had the co-founder of Chili's. You know, they did nine billion in revenue last year. And the reason why we're able to do that is because there's this experience that happens. There's this reciprocity that's giving back, right? Because the people who feel like they don't have anything to add um, to, you know, someone like a co-founder of Chili's, they have energy. You know, they have youthfulness. They have insight. They have new ideas that they can give. They have technology that they can work with. And the person who's kind of been around the rodeo a little bit, the more ex- experienced or seasoned entrepreneur, they're looking for people to work with. They're looking for different networks to connect with. Um, and they're also looking for someone above. And even the co-founder, you know, the co-founder of Chili's, or uh, we've had other people who have uh, built multiple seven-figure companies, they're also looking to connect with individuals. So we really have the full gamut of entrepreneurs. Um, we found that a lot of online service-based businesses um, come. So what that means is that those entrepreneurs who are primarily doing things online, you have a service that you're do, uh, you're you're doing and helping others, whether that's consulting, whether that's uh, coaching, whether that's you know um, um, helping others to grow their network. We find a lot of those type of entrepreneurs, but it's really for the full gamut. Wow. This, I mean, this, this is like super exciting. I mean, we're going we're gonna to come back in a moment. I'm going to learn more about Robert and what he's doing with Entrepreneur Dinners. Uh, Robert, how can they connect with you? I mean, we're, I know you're not going anywhere yet because you've got to come back in just a second, but how can those folks connect that just want to get more information on Entrepreneur Dinners? Like, where is it hosted? What state is it in? I mean, um, but where can they get information about Entrepreneur Dinners? The best place to go mm-hmm. is entrepreneursdinner.com. That's entrepreneur with an S, entrepreneurs dinner.com and what you'll see is when you go to that website Mm -hmm. you'll see a video you'll see the one from uh the the yacht that we did on the 75 foot catamaran yacht and then there's entrepreneurs entrepreneurs, dinner yep dinner.com is that is that what i heard that's it so So that's hold on ladies and gentlemen we're gonna we're gonna go to real time we're gonna go see if this site works sometimes people give me these sites they don't even work y'all they really don't but let's just go see if robert's site work okay there it is robert okay so i'm looking at the site i think you can see it can't you robert Yes, I can. Okay, is it too big? Can you can you see it? Okay. No, that's perfect. And then it says, join us for the next entrepreneur. Oh, you know what? I'm on the wrong click. I got to go here. I think I can scroll. Okay, so I'm probably scrolling. Join us for the entrepreneur's dinner, your email. Okay. Okay, so you so you, get, you got scheduled the next date, right? Yep, that's right. We're going to have the next one. If I click if this, you... what, is, what does this do? Oh, you know what? I'm on, I'm on the wrong file. I can't click it because I'm over here. It's not going to play. I can't click because I'm on, I think I'm online. I don't think it's going to play. Is it playing? Let me see. Oh, that's pretty cool. But you can't hear anything, can you? Nope. I me, can't hear anything, but maybe either. if you click if you click the sound, you might be able to hear it. Oh, oh of course. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Oh, that's cool. My name is Sonny Gosal. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. I'm founder of the Bushido Code. The, the biggest takeaway from this event is 
the caliber of people that are in this room. The thing about entrepreneurs, they are a type of people that take destiny into their own hands. They shape their lives. And being in a room of people of this caliber, being in a room of people who shape their destiny, that's powerful. And when you have a room of people in this caliber, you are being supported by people who think like you, who uh, have visions similar to you, and who are of your caliber. So when you connect with these people, your vision is again taken to the next level and you have a support group of people like you might not have had before. So I highly recommend Entrepreneur's Dinner. I think it's uh, well worth its value. And uh, not only that, but you're gonna have a good time, good food, uh, surrounded by good people, good music. It's a hell of a time. I would say after speaking to Robert, one of the things I've gained uh, is just the power of relationships. Just seeing the group of people he pulled together, seeing the value that everyone was adding on all fronts, every conversation I ever heard, every conversation I was having was adding impact and was adding value. For the same reason, I think anyone looking for something, whether it's mentorship, business advice, life advice, kind of syncing your life with your business, really anything, there's something to be gained here. Uh, and I think you should try it out. Wow, can I can I get it? Can I get a dinner like that, man? Hey. Come on, come on and come, man. We'd love to have you. <laughs> I'm loving that, man. I love the concept. How did you how did you end up getting on the boat out there, man? That was like cool stuff. Yeah, you know, one of the cool things that happens is uh, when people are behind you on the concept, they they volunteer, you know, the opportunity to use their homes, uh, to use their boats and things like that. So it's all about relationships, right? You know, we developed a relationship with the person that owned that catamaran yacht, as we do with all the entrepreneurs that come to our events, as well as uh, the place that we host with. Um, one of the cool things about our events is that uh, we have staff. So we're staffed by entrepreneurs as well, all the way down from the the, the personal chef down to the photographer and videographer. And something that's cool about it is that 99% of the people who staff our event are hired by the entrepreneurs who come to our event for something else as well. Oh, right? Wow. So, I mean, it just, we're just supporting one another, man. I mean, yeah. wouldn't you just love to come to a place where you can hit some golf balls on the back of the boat while developing relationships <laughs> that grow your business? Yeah, now, now, what happens to the balls? The balls, the balls go in the water. <laughs> yeah, they go in the water, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't, we don't talk about that, but yeah, they go in the water. <laughs> We don't talk about that. Man. We don't talk about that. Uh, that. That sounds cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, we, we checked out the site. I'm going to encourage all of you to go to the site. I think I got the site up top of here. The site was entrepreneursdinner.com. You can register. You can you can put your email in, and you can get an invite. If you're not if you're not invited, just call just just call Robert and say, Robert, what happened, man? Robert, what happened? Uh, beautiful view featured on TEDx. Robert is amazing. Uh, we're gonna come back to Robert. We're gonna close out. We're in overtime. I have give have Robert give the final comments. But before we do that, I'm gonna go over to my man Justin Morgan. He wants to give some tips and some ideas that you can use in your business to immediately be able to generate more revenue and help more people. Let's see what none other than Justin Morgan. What's up, happy entrepreneurs? Justin Morgan of AutomationMastery.net back for another automation moment. Um, thank you, Shay, for giving me this moment. And with this moment, I want to talk about a little shortcut you can use to get some sales done. Now, typically, people without this word called webinar, right? And so webinars are great. Webinars are a tool that allow you to sell without being the salesperson. Not only does it do that, but it also lets you sell at bulk. So at first, I'm going to talk a little quickly about some webinar tools you can use. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of hack, something you can do that perhaps webinars aren't in your budget right now. I still want you to be able to get things done. And so webinar tools that you can use, and they allow you to essentially set up a presentation via PowerPoint or video and, and things of that nature that allow you to talk to your prospective client and then sell them. And then, you know, after the webinar, they typically go to a checkout page. You've seen them. Things that have those timers, you know, register now, or register in the future. Some of those are live and some of them are pre-recorded. Can't go into all of that right now, but the tools you should maybe look at, one, ClickFunnels has a webinar tool that I enjoy. Um, there's something called EverWebinar that allows you to do 
automated webinars. If you're trying to do them live, then you want to search up something called Webinar Jam. Webinar Jam is another thing. And Zoom is another popular one. While I'm not as big of a fan of the layout and the design, Zoom is another reasonable choice. And something that's a little bit of a curveball for my folks who use GetResponse, they also have their own webinar platform that you can utilize if you're willing to do the upcharge. Now, for some of you, you're like, well, Justin, maybe I don't have the money for those platforms. What you can do, and this is real quick, you can still have to kind of do some of the research on your own, or you know, you can continue to watch this series and learn a little bit more, but there's a way that you can go ahead and just post a video to a page. So you check me, create an opt-in page, send them to a page that has a video, and you just put your presentation there. Um, now, is it as fancy, as as nice as having a webinar? No, but it still gets you a chance to have a presentation that somebody can access without you having to be there. So that's a little bit of a hack. It's not as great as having a webinar and a, a full webinar system because it creates a certain mental change when that's in place. But if you can't afford it and you're trying to just save a couple dollars, then why not? So I'm just throwing it at you. That's my automation moment. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you, Shay. Back to you. And for the rest of you, see you later. Peace. Peace. Mic check, mic check. Robert, are you there? I am. Am I looking frozen right now? Yeah, uh, you do look frozen, but hold up. No, no worries. Let me let me do this. We'll we'll give you a second just to dial back in. Just to dial back in. For those folks that are out there listening right now, we're gonna come back to none other than the one and only Robert. His computer froze up for just a minute, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Once we bring uh, Robert back in, we'll bring it down the home stretch, and we're also gonna share with you some things that you can do. Uh, right now in your business for everyone that's out there right now that, that's joining you got a chance to see what happens when we're live uh, someone asked the question what city are we in don't worry uh, I think Robert's back let me do a check here Mike check Mike check Robert yes sir yes sir back in back in it man it, it don't take you long to do that you know they were asking what city is all this taking place in by the way yeah, that's a great question. So right now what we're doing is we're hosting the Entrepreneur's Dinner in Dallas, Texas. Don't worry, we we're planning on moving up to other cities. But look, that video that you just showed, Che, mm -hmm. that one we had entrepreneurs coming from six different states and one that even flew from, from outside the country. So what I found is that entrepreneurs who want to make a way to grow their business, especially through relationships, they find a way to get to the rooms that they need to be in. So we get from entrepreneurs from literally all over the country and even outside the country that come here to Dallas, Texas, because we attract some of the best and brightest entrepreneurs across the world. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I can't wait to connect. I can't wait to be there. You know, one of the questions, so when you when you launch the next date, you got to let us know, man, so we can make reservations to be there. We got to get our own secret invite, man. We got to be in the place. Got to be in the place. Um, also, if, if, if you can, um, for, for those folks that, that are listening right now that, that are tuning in, uh, you've been talking to none other than Robert. And Robert is a speaker. He's an entrepreneur. He's the founder of Entrepreneur Dinners. Yeah, I'm going to ask him if he'll, if he'll do us a favor. I didn't know. He didn't know I was going to ask him to do this. But I'm going to ask him if, if he would, wouldn't mind maybe next next week maybe sharing his own thought of the week. Uh, one of the things sometimes we we'll ask uh, folks who are on Robert uh, during the week is to take a moment and put together their thought of the week and then share that with the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe. Um, I know you're busy. I know you're always on the go. We want to have you back on the show, but we love to, to get what's in your brain. We love to get your thoughts. We love for you to help motivate, encourage, empower, inspire, and give resources to our entrepreneurs. So my question is, would you would you be willing to be one of the I reporters, one of the contributors for the Happy Entrepreneur Network and be a resource that people can depend on um, so you can help them improve their life, get the results in their life and the results in their business? And I'm, I'm glad you asked. I'd love to. I mean, I love what you're doing right now. I love how you're continually serving. So any opportunity that I have to serve your community and other entrepreneurs who are growing their business, you know, I'm all in on that. So I'd love to. Fantastic. That's 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 us all for amazing. Here's what I like to do. We're coming down the home stretch. We're we're in overtime for Robert. This is probably like double overtime, by the way. <laughs> He's like, uh, Shay, how long does the show go? I said, well, I don't know. Um, but we are coming down the home stretch. I know we are coming down the home stretch, my friend. Just I'm rapid, having fun. Just, just rapid fire as we go. Rapid fire, ask a question. Just rapid fire. I'm, I'm curious, um, um, what's what's one of the mentors that you've had along the way? You've had so many mentors, um, but what's maybe a mentor, if you want to mention a name, that's fine, or maybe a professional in, 
And what's, what's one of the lessons you learned from your mentor that you'd want to pass on to the listeners, our viewers, the happy entrepreneur tribe right now? You know, you mentioned Roberto Candelaria earlier, mm -hmm. right? So he and I, uh, or rather, he was on this uh, earlier and we, we met at his event. And Roberto is somebody who's poured in so much to me. I'm so grateful for Roberto and the, just the information, but also the support that he's provided me. And one of the things that I've learned from Roberto, I've learned a lot from Roberto. Um, if, if you guys don't know Roberto Candelaria, you have to check him out. I mean, the guy's amazing at sponsorship. But one of the things real quickly that I learned from him was – just do it. You know, don't don't think so much. Just be quick to launch. Just do it. So if you have an event you want to host, put a date out there, and then you'll you'll figure out the steps uh, after that. If you have a, a monetary goal that you want to, you know, amount of money that you want to make, set that goal and then figure out from there. So one of the things that he's great at is putting it out there and then taking action, and that's why he's where he's at. I love it. Put it out there. Take action. Um, you know, I want to, once again, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for giving up your time. You could be doing something else right now, so much you could be doing. But you decided to stop by the Happy Entrepreneur Network and Happy Entrepreneur Show and, and share your ideas, share your thoughts. And what I like most about it is you didn't ask for a cash app. You didn't ask if I had Zelly. You didn't ask for a credit card or a check. You said, Shay, I, I'm there, man. I'm, I'm all in. And so certainly um, you have a heart to give. You have a heart to serve. We appreciate you. I'd like to give you the final comments, man, as we close out. Um, share with the audience, their folks, when they finish this, they know that today is their January 1st, that today is their January 1st. And now they don't want to be encouraged and inspired. They've got to go take action for folks that are out there, by the way. Um, and we certainly appreciate that. So take a moment, if you would, and share your, your closing comments for us to have to go out there and make it happen. Because today is your January 1st. Yeah, today's your January 1st. And, you know, one of the things that as entrepreneurs, as leaders, is our success isn't just about us. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can make success about ourselves, but it's really about the people that we serve. And... We stand on the shoulders of giants. We stand on the shoulders of those who come before us. And the longer that you, the longer that anybody who's listening and watching this, the longer that you delay what's inside of you, the gift that you have to give into the world, you're delaying the purpose and the sea by which you're going to serve others. And you're, you're holding them back from the gift that you have. So the longer that you're delaying those things that are inside you to give and to contribute to the world, that means someone else is missing out on your gift. Don't be selfish. Pour like into the that. world. Pour into the things that you have. Give without any expectation of receiving a return. And make sure that that seed of greatness doesn't go to the grave with you, but it's left here on the earth for others to benefit from. Wow, I love what you're doing, man. You are amazing. You're incredible. For all our listeners, thank you so much. Look right below the video. Look right below the video. Let's give Robert a digital applause, a digital applause. And how do we give him a digital applause? Well, you can say, thank you, Robert. You can look right below the video. Look right below the video and say, thank you, Robert. Or, Robert, we appreciate you. Or, Robert, great job. We love getting feedback from you. So just look right below the video. Look right below the video and put, Robert, we thank you. Robert, great job. Robert, we appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing. And don't worry, I'll be in his, um, I'll be in his ear. Um, I'll be on his list. We'll find out when the next entrepreneur dinner is. We'll have him back on it so he can tell us when it is, where it is, what's going on. We might not be able to keep him as long as we did right now. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to see if I can grab five or ten minutes of his time. <laughs> Maybe he'll come back and grace us with his presence, and we'd be certainly honored. So with that being said, um, Sherry said, awesome job. Sean says she loves it. Put a big heart sign down there. Thank you so much. Hit the clap button. Hit the heart button. With that being said, Robert, thank you for joining, man. I know you're in Dallas, Texas. Wonderful things are going. We're looking forward to the next entrepreneur dinner. And you keep on doing what you're saying. Uh, Ned said, great job. Keep doing what you're doing, by the way. Keep doing what you're doing. Your boy Tommy Jones is on there watching right now, by the way. I don't know if you know Tommy Jones. Tommy Jones is in um, uh, Houston. Well, we are in Houston. He's in Arlington, Texas. You're in Dallas, Texas. I think I, think I connected you guys together when you were there, by the way. He's out there watching right now. Uh, Jeannie Brown says, thank you, Robert. Uh, Sean Lee Brinkley says, thank you, Robert. Great stuff. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Nicole Brown Houston is on, says, job well done. 
CF Jackson says, Robert, keep it moving forward and upward, mm -hmm. by the way. She's on it, by the way. Uh, Tommy Jones says, great job. Tommy Jones is in the house. <laughs> Ah, he's so funny. Uh, Loretta's out there. Loretta says, awesome. Tommy was supposed to hang out, man. He was there. He came, as you know, on Sunday, by the way, and didn't get a chance to hang out with him Monday at a flight at 2.30. Um, <clears throat> next time, we're going to get some barbecue. Next time, I'm in Arlington, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas. I'm at, right now, I'm in San Antonio right now, but we've got to get some of that good barbecue. I know it's not good for you, okay? I know. I know it's not the best <laughs> for you, but I don't care. It's okay to have ice cream. You just can't, have a, you just can't eat a gallon. You know, it's okay to have a slice of cake. Can't eat the whole cake. Everything in moderation, moderation, moderation. With that being said, Tommy, with that being said, Tommy, you're amazing. All right, Robert, you're incredible, man. I'll see you later. God bless. With that being said, by the way, for those folks that are joining, for those folks that are tuning in, by the way, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown. Make sure, yeah, my name is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless. And today is your January 1st. Today is your January 1st. Happy New Year! Isn't that kind of cool? Happy New Year! It's always Happy Please New Year. Please go ahead and give a big standing check ovation check, check, for check. the one and the only Shay Brown. And I'm here right now in this moment with none other than the one and only Dr. Willie Jolly. What's up, my friend? It's a privilege and a pleasure and a treat and a treasure to be in your presence. All right, Delator, we're gonna get started. You ready, Delator? I'm ready, friend. I'm you ready, ready, Dr. Kinnett? Ready, you ready. No, none other than Andy Harikas. And, <laughs> and we have someone like a Dr. Sonia, who's a bad sister. All right, now, go ahead <laughs> with your bad self. None other than the Kim Warren Martin. promise I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shea Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Yeah.